So let's see what will be a typical zonation uh, workflow. You know that figure? You have some time to prepare your data, run prioritization, then you have some post-processing uh, work to do with the output that Zonation gives you. You can find a lot of more information, information on the Zonation manual. It is a very complete manual. And it has a lot of examples. It has a, uh, a series of exercises at the end, so you can try by yourself. And you can you have some part of introduction about methods, algorithms, the whole uh, logical thinking behind uh, spatial prioritization. So it's a, a good place to start and reading all this. And then, of course, you will have a lot of technical information on how to uh, put the data in and stuff. So just everybody has the, the sampling data already? Who doesn't? Everybody has, okay. I think that in that forward there, there is uh, a zonation manual. So you can, you, you already have it, if you want to take a look. So, the first thing is that you need to get the biodiversity distribution data into zonation. So all the data that you've been working with uh, Tau and Adolfo and putting range maps into grids and these kind of things, you need to do all that before so you have, for example, your region and the distribution of a given species, for example, from a range map. You, you need to pre-process this, this in some kind of GIS uh, software to generate the input map, which I already said that you need one raster for each feature, okay? So the raster is showing species of currency, and you need the dimension of the raster. And that will be something like this. You have this raster file, you have the distribution of species, you associate the distribution of species with your grid cells. Ends up with this. And from here, you got your raster, okay? This type of data usually is a kind of vector data. And if you're using uh, GIS software, you can use a kind of tool that can convert vector data into raster data, okay? So you end up with this raster, with this heading that should be the same for all uh, of your features, and the information you need. And you can have uh, as many rasters, rasters you, you need, actually, you want or you need. Well, that's the first very basic files. One raster for each feature you're trying to protect. This dot ask files. Then you have to do a species list file, this dot spp file. This file actually informs the nation where are the rasters of the species. Okay? So it is a list of all those biodiversity feature raster files that are to be included in your analysis. It should look like this. So here goes the number of the raster file for a species. If you're calling those species species one, two, three, then this is the name of the file, okay? You see that uh, the rasters we will be using in our uh, sampling data, they are the name of the species. So you have Asionix jubatus dot ask, okay? And here is the name of the file, because the nation will uh, read this file, the species list file, and from within this file, he will search the raster for, for the feature, okay? And you have other parameters here for the each feature. So in this very same species list file, you can have the species weight. If you put one in this column, it will mean that all species have the same weight. Or you can change the weight of the species here. Then you have other parameters that are needed for more complex analysis, like considering species-specific habitat connectivity or 
uh, the quality of the neighborhood of that cell. And then you have the, the name of the raster files. This is the basic file, uh, mandatory file number two. So you need to have all the rasters, one raster for each species, and you need to have this species list file that tells the nation where are the files containing the features, the distribution of the features, and what are the parameters of your analysis, and what is the weight of these species, okay? And all of these, you're going to build these files in Notepad. Very simple to do. Then you have <coughs> uh, the run settings file. It is all the parameters of the analysis, all the things that you're doing should be here. That's where you're saying what to do with the nation, okay? This run settings will have information like this. What is the removal rule you're using? And that means, what is the way that you calculate in marginal loss? So if you put, for example, one here, that would mean that you, you were using the core area zonation removal rule. If you put two, then it means that you're using additive benefit function, okay? Three, target-based planning, and four, uh, the other option. This is the warp, warp factor, means I told you that zonation removes, calculates the marginal loss and remove the cell with the lowest value. Then it recalculates and remove another one, okay? But if you have tens of billions of cells, this could take a little while. So you can tell the nation that he can remove 100 cells at the same time. Not the lowest value, but the 100 lowest values. This will, this will increase speed, speed in your analysis. You can remove it from edges. You can use this uh, file for the species. You don't have the distribution, actually. So you just have the point, the point locality data, the records with the, the, the uh, coordinates. So if you're using this file, you should set this to one and put the name of the file here, okay? It's pretty much simple to understand the logic. If you're going to use cost, if you're not using cost, then this value should be set to zero. If you're going to use cost, then you should set this to one and put the name of the cost file here, okay? Pretty easy. If you're not going to use a mask, for example, accounting for reserve, uh, already established, you put the zero. If you're going to consider protected areas, then you put one and the name of the file, okay? And so we go for the other settings. I, I would come to this when we're doing the exercise. So that's the 31. You need the rasters for each feature. You need the species list file. Then we need the run settings. It says the nation what it needs to do. And then you have this bad file. This is actually the donation call. It's a command line that tells the nation to do the analysis. So you have uh, your calling zonation here. That's the software, ZIG3, executable. You have this negative R to say that zonation that you want to, to have a new run of the zonation. Otherwise, you can just upload and a previous analysis that you have done. So and here you say the name of the run settings file, okay, that dot that file, with all the parameters of the analysis. The name of the species list file, is, it is where the biodiversity feature list is. A name from an out, for an output file, could be any name and some other parameters needed to order analysis, like if you're trying to get clumped solutions for your network, I'll get to this. Okay, so this is actually a common line in, in, zone, in zonation. You need that file. In any case, uh, one run is one thing, but you can do more analysis. So one of the good things of zonation is that you can have a file with different common lines and each common line is actually is one analysis, okay? So you have uh, pretty much the same, but then the settings file is different. 
It means that you are doing other uh, analysis here. You could be using another uh, species list file. And it's very important you to remember that for each of these runs, you should have a different no name for the output file. Otherwise, zonation will just, uh, how can I say? Re Override, yeah, the previous one. So this is important. This is one of the things you usually don't remember to do. And then you, you, you don't have the, the previous analysis you, you want. And you can say to him this last uh, value here is that whether the graphic user interface will remain open or closed during the analysis. So if you're running a bunch of analysis zonations and do want to have a look at, you can do this kind of batch file, put run on it, and just forget it. Go have a coffee or something like that. And when you come back, all the analysis will uh, be ready. So Zonation also has uh, a graphic user interface. It will look like this. You do right click with your mouse or trackpad. It will appear this button to open project. You open a project, there will be that dot bat file, okay, that comments that has the command line. Then it opens a project here. You can do right click again, and then you press Q, and we start doing the analysis. It will read all the files, you check the consistency of files, and if everything is okay, it will start running. And then the results will appear here. Here is the map of priority ranking uh, that we will be using. We can work on these colors and some other features. We'll do that, no problem. And then the solutions will be here. So if you, if you do a double click here, you see the map for that solution. And if you do a double click here, you will see the map for the other solution, okay? And you can just send this map to uh, another uh, tab that is here in the new version called Merged Maps. So you can send this map there, and then you can click on another solution, send this map there, and you can actually compare solutions visually, okay? And there is the output. You always have those uh, picture files that contain the maps that the nation uh, did, this one and this one. And the text file with the curves, the curve performance, so you can do it in Excel or uh, R. And then this um, something, the name you have chosen, dot rank, dot uh, txt. That will be the rank of the region, so you can open this file in uh, any GIS software and just do whatever you want with it. So <clears throat> this is the basic workflow. You have the species distribution data. You do some pre-processing with GIS to get the ESC files as input data. Then you have to produce the species list file, the run parameters, and the, the command line. Then you're ready to, to run with the nation, OK? Okay, so far? So, can we start working on it? Everybody has the data. Yes or no? Yes. yes, okay. What is this data? So, we have <clears throat> South Africa. Uh, it's a grid with 11,729 grid cells at one kilometer resolution for South Africa. We have the distribution of 260 mammal species. There will be 260 mammal species raster files in your folder, okay? Then you also have a protected areas raster, which uh, should be like this. These are the formal areas that has been protected. I got this data from the IUCN uh, database, and this one from SAMBIS database on protected areas. And then you have a human influence index raster. I got this from a project from NASA 
this map in this kind of human footprint on the planet. So this human influence uh, index will be used as our cost, okay? This is our cost file. We want to avoid places like this in which human influence is very high because we can have conflicts with uh, biodiversity protection. And we will try to get uh, to select areas in, in places where human influence is low. Okay? You can find more information of these uh, particular files in, in this file, the zero metadata uh, file. Okay. So the first thing we're, gonna, we're going to do is to run a very basic exercise of core area zonation. So you should open the zonation graphic user interface, which is this file, okay? Then you double click to open a new project, sorry, right click to open a new project, and you will open this file, zero CA, this core area, dot bat. Okay? I will do that with you. We will be using uh, these uh, settings here and this species list file. So just open it with you so we can do together this analysis. So, this is the file, get it open. So here in this uh, project view, double click, open new project, and we're gonna do this one, right? It's the very basic one using core area. You open this project, and here is the project. You can see the files that the nation is reading, okay? Here is all uh, raster files for each of the species, 260. Uh, and these files, he can read it bef because he wrote the name of the file in the species list file, okay? Which is this 2SP list SPP. And it has a settings file with all the parameters of the analysis. This is here. The output files. He's going to write, and that's it for this analysis. So, again, double click in the project. You open this little menu, and then you click Q. You said right, right click. click. Right click. Ah, right click, sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay? Everybody here? Yeah? Okay, then you click here. If you go to that tab, it says text output, you see that Zonation is reading all the files. Can you see that? Okay, now he started doing, he'll let you know here, 50% done, and he's running. Okay, that's done. In the tab map, you should have a map like this, right? You can work with this map. My suggestion is that you may click here and keep map settings. Then you can move the map to whatever place you want, and you can zoom it in and out. 
So it's better to work. To put mine like this. Okay?